talented guy, but he said in his view as a songwriter, How Great Thou Art was the greatest hymn ever written. He said, I wish I could write a hymn as good as How Great Thou Art. He, he said at the end of his life, I never did. He said, I tried. If you want to know why the Bible calls David a man after God's own heart, and my wife and I have been reading through the Psalms this year we in, in our daily devotion, David knew how to praise God. Even as a shepherd boy, his songs uplift God. They magnify God. We read last night, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We need to hear words like that in this day and age. With all the stuff going on, where do we look to? Where our help comes from. Then sings my soul. and Heavenly Father, God, how great you are. God, we're here today to glorify you and to lift your name on high. God, may you be honored in all that we say, all that we sing, all that we do, and all that we think here this morning. God, I pray for our service this morning. I pray for Brother Bruce as he continues to lead us in service and worship God. And I pray for Brother Jeff's words that you just anoint his words. God, I pray for each person in this room. I pray for their heart. God, that they may have an open heart. God, that the word that Brother Jeff preaches and the music that we sing, God, that it just penetrates our heart. And we leave here different this morning. For in your name we pray. Amen. It's great to see everyone in the house of the Lord this morning. Today, now is the time that we would normally do our fellowship. And uh, even though we don't get to go around and shake hands and hug next, we will take just a brief moment to turn and speak to those around you and just tell them it's great to see them in the house of the Lord this morning. We do have several honored guests here at Heritage Baptist Church, and we're glad that you chose to come worship with us. You could have been anywhere this morning, but you come to worship with us. So we don't have visitors here at Heritage. We have honored guests, and we're honored that you chose to be here this morning. We thank you, and we're glad that you chose Heritage Baptist Church. Take just a few seconds to stand and speak to those around you and tell them it's great to see them in their masks this morning. And then we will join together. But before you do, we just want to say thank you to Brother Bruce and his wife for coming on this morning on such short notice. They were called last night around 8, 8.30 because Brother Ben was going to be here, but uh, at the last minute he couldn't. So Brother Bruce, we're thankful for you being here and we're glad that you brought your lovely wife this morning. So thank you all for just being obedient to the Lord and the call that he has on your life. Take just a few moments to sit this morning. and gender. Those with less are looked down on with those with more. Many assume the worst about a person based on color of their skin or the history of their heritage. But God's Word is clear about these divisions. It's clear about discrimination and racism. Salvation through Jesus is available for, for people of every nation, tribe, and tongue. Each one of us, no matter our history or, our, or heritage, has been created in His image. This is what God sees. The question is, what do you see?
same, same prophet came to anoint David, he made the statement, is God colorblind? No, God's not colorblind, but what does God see when he looks at a person? The prophet said he looks straight to the heart. To God be the glory. Just remain seated. We'll stand again and give you a chance to stretch your legs for the minute. question. How many of you before this happened took church for granted? Come on, I did. I can remember, I've only had one other time in my life like this. I was raised in a very strict Pentecostal background and every time the doors were open we were in church. My mother was the organist, the organ was over here and I was literally in church Nine months before I was born, mother missed one Sunday having me and then was back on the organ bench playing organ every Sunday like she was. So I never missed. When I went to college, way up in Springfield, Missouri, I kind of rebelled and I sat home from church for six weeks. I said, I'll show my daddy, my strict daddy. I just won't go to church. I was miserable. <laughs> I missed being in church. I missed church family. Uh, I realized that I had to have church. I needed God. I needed a relationship. I needed a fellowship. And that's the light. that was in 1971. I've never been out of church as long as we just have. Uh, did, did you miss the fellowship? Did you miss the faces? Uh, we're starving for fellowship. So I'm, I'm glad y'all, this third, fourth week, Brother Jeff, fourth week, I, I'm glad that, you know, thank you that you're brave. But don't look down on those that are still a little afraid to be at home because we've got an elderly congregation and we had 36 last week and we normally have over 120. So it was our first Sunday back. But the fellowship, I'll never take that for granted again. I, we had a little gathering at my house with some special people last night, just sat across the table and fellowship with some 85-year-old ladies that are dear to me. Miss that fellowship. Let's stand together, sing the family of God. I want you to turn around and wave it, folks. You can't shake your hand this day, but you can wave at them as we sing this. We'll just wave and sing. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family.
worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Jesus. Jesus said, what did he come to do? If you had to sum it up, now he did a lot of things. He healed people, he preached, he taught, he discipled, he mentored, but his primary thing that he did was glorify his father. He was obedient to his father, and his father said, I'm well pleased in him. Have you ever seen such meanness and hatred, despise for the United States and for each other? So what can we do to offset that as Christians? Do some random act of kindness today. Don't let today, don't let the sun go down to you. Speak kindness to somebody. Open a door for somebody. Be patient with a waitress or somebody checking you out. Just show some kindness. That'll glorify God. Be different. Don't be like they are. Be kind today.
is so good to be in the house of the Lord today, and uh, I'm excited about what God is doing. And uh, Brother Bruce, thank you so much for you and your wife being with us today. Uh, it's a, a blessing to us. Um, Brother Ben uh, called me yesterday evening, and uh, he was a little bit under the weather, so uh, he's not able to be with us today. But uh, if Brother Ben, if you're watching, uh, we love you, and uh, we're praying for you. And uh, looking forward to you being back with us as soon as possible. Um, wasn't it good to have Marie back today on the piano? I have uh, missed the piano so much, and uh, I appreciate that. And uh, we've got folks that are visiting with us. We have a young lady here this morning that drove all the way from West Palm Beach. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, she is a traveling nurse, uh, Melissa, uh, sitting over here, young lady. Uh, when I got here about 9 o'clock this morning, uh, she was in the parking lot, and uh, she just rolled down her window and asked if she could worship with us. And I had to kind of think, well, you know, oh, yes, you can. Uh, be glad, glad to have you. But uh, uh, she's in the medical field, traveling nurse that has come. You're at the medical center, or excuse me, Southeast Health. Um, we're glad to, to have you today. I'm just curious, uh, if you are in the medical field, would you stand? If you're in the medical field? Yes. Thank you all so much uh, for all that you've done. And uh, there's, there's so many others also that have uh, pitched in during this time, but uh, we are grateful uh, for our medical uh, personnel. They've done a tremendous uh, job during this time, uh, during this pandemic. But uh, it's good to be here today. Uh, it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, this morning we're going to start a new series in the book of uh, Romans. And uh, it's important that you know that Romans is so much about doctrine. And you say, well, what's doctrine? It's about uh, what you believe. It's believing the right thing. And uh, if you have studied or looked at the life of Paul, one of the things that you know that was very important to Paul was to make sure that people understood the truth. And uh, that's what we're going to find out in the book of Romans. And this morning we're going to be looking at the first chapter and uh, the first several verses there. And uh, if you will uh, turn there, stand with me in honor and in reverence to reading God's Word. Romans chapter 1, uh, beginning with verse 1. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead." Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all the nations for his name, among whom you also are called of Jesus Christ, to all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of His Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by some means now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift." So that you may be established, that is, that, you, uh, that I may be encouraged uh, together with you by the mutual faith of you and me. Now I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles I am a debtor both to Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. Let's pray together. 
Our Father, we once again thank you for the privilege that we have to come together and to corporately worship. And as Brother Bruce challenged us a few moments ago, uh, Father, we have been guilty of taking for granted uh, the privilege that we have of coming together. But Father, as we're here today, we claim your promise that tells us when two or three are gathered in your name, that there you will be also and that you are with us. Father, during this portion of the service, we turn our attention to your written and spoken word. And Father, we are a Bible-believing, teaching, preaching church. And Father, we stand on the Word of God. And Father, today as we begin looking at the book of Romans, Father, I pray that the truth of Your Word, God, that it will leap off the page and into our hearts and minds and challenge us to live for You. But Father, I pray that You again would anoint my life. May every word that comes from my lips have come from Your heart. And God, I pray that it will challenge and change us and convict us today. Father, this is your time, and we look forward to what you have to say to us. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Today we're going to be looking at Romans uh, afresh. Uh, you've probably heard sermons on the book of Romans most all of your life. But I want us to look at it with uh, fresh eyes and with uh, uh, open ears today. And uh, the first thing that we really have to look at this morning as we're looking at the Apostle Paul is uh, about what credentials tell, uh, tell us about somebody. You know, sometimes it's what kind of education you have. Sometimes it's what kind of experience you have. Paul is writing to people that don't know him very well. And he's writing to these people. They probably had heard about Paul, but they had no personal contact with Paul uh, until this time. And uh, he could have uh, presented himself in any number of ways that would have given him credibility to the people there. Paul could have pre presented his credentials of a man that was born a Jew. He was trained by Gamaliel and was a Pharisee. Uh, this would have given him instant credibility uh, with the Jewish Christians in the Roman church. But Paul could have talked about his calling on the, the Damascus road to be a witness of the gospel uh, to the Gentiles and how he lived uh, in a certain area in uh, uh, Nabataean Arabia. He lived there. Uh, history tells us that he lived there for three years while he was being taught by the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, it's an easy thing sometimes to have credentials, but training teaches a person. All training, it takes uh, time, uh, it takes money, uh, it takes studying. But does training necessarily make the individual a person that has credentials? Well, for what we see in Paul, his credentials are his name. And he introduces himself. And the first thing that we see as we begin here in Romans, we see uh, who we are. Now, in Romans chapter 1, verse 1, Paul says, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ. Do you notice here that Paul calls himself a bondservant? Now, in the Greek, it's doulos, uh, the common New Testament word for servant. Now, although in Greek culture, it's most of the time, it's referred to somebody that's uh, involuntarily uh, a permanent slave. In other words, they didn't sign up for it. Uh, they were most likely forced to be able to serve. Now, Paul, he elevates this word by using it in its Hebrew sense to describe a servant who is willing and uh, is knowingly committing themselves to the service of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, Paul's not being made to serve the Lord. He's serving the Lord as a bond servant out of his love and out of his respect uh, for Jesus Christ. And uh, that's different than what the world has ever known. But there's a big difference here. There's a big difference between the motivation for doing something your master tells you to do out of love or out of fear. 
Now, the Bible says that we're to fear the Lord, but it's talking about a respectful type of fear. But you and I, we don't serve the Lord out of a fear that we're afraid that somehow He's sitting up there in heaven and that He's going to strike us with a lightning bolt if we get out of line. It's serving the Lord out of love. A deep, deep love out of what He's done for you and me. It's, it's a, out of humility, out of respect, out of love. And that's the idea that Paul is trying to help his people that he's talking to to understand. This is how Paul starts the description of himself as somebody that voluntarily is a servant of God. Now, I know that sometimes people have different motivations for going to church. Sometimes our motivation for going to church is that it's just out of routine. And one of the things that we have discovered over these uh, two months or so is that uh, we, we've missed being together. We, we really have. We've missed being together, and I think it has revealed that maybe we have taken that privilege that we have of meeting together, maybe we've taken it for granted. You know, there's been some terrible, awful things that have happened during this pandemic, but one of the good things is that maybe it has awakened us to the place where we recognize what an honor it is for us to be able to come together and, and to worship together. Listen, we've done the best we could with what we've had. Uh, I preached into a cell phone, and many of you watched uh, over a cell phone or a laptop or a, a tablet or something. Uh, folks, um, that's the best we could do during that time. But listen, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not like being together. It's not like being corporately together worshiping the Lord. And I'm afraid that what's happened is that uh, in the past, that we had kind of taken it for granted. Uh, sometimes uh, any old excuse to get to miss church was, was okay. But listen, I think we've come to realize just what an awesome privilege it is to be able to come together and to be able to, to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ in person together. Now what we find here about Paul is he's, he's willfully, knowingly, giving himself totally over to the Lord because he loves the Lord. If you were to write an introduction of yourself, what would you say? Uh, we might be a little bit kinder than our spouse, wouldn't we? Y'all smile at me. Well, I can't see it. Y'all wave at me. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but if we were to write our own introduction of ourselves, we, we know that we probably would be a little bit kinder than uh, somebody else might be. But what would somebody else, what would they write about you? Might be pretty humbling to read that. But the introduction of Paul was extremely important. He wanted them to know that he, he was a bond servant of the Lord Jesus Christ because of his love. Now, the next question is that you find here is, that, is what do you do? Now, in Romans chapter 1, verse 1, Paul goes on to say he's called to be an apostle separated to the gospel of God. Now, what we know is that Paul is called to be an apostle, which in the Greek means one who is sent. In the New Testament, it primarily refers to the 12 apostles of Christ, but it also referred to uh, Matthias, who took Judas' place, and Paul, who was an apostle, by the right of his Damascus Road experience. And Christ gave the apostles power to be able to perform miracles. And over in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, it, it was to confirm their authority as one who was sent by Christ. Every New Testament book was written by either an apostle or a close associate that was under his auspices. And Paul, we know, was set apart as an apostle to take the gospel to the Gentiles. Now, today in our culture, we don't put the same emphasis on the name of somebody uh, like they did in New Testament times or in other parts of the world. 
Like when you read Scripture and you read about Joshua bar none, uh, when I was a young person I didn't quite understand what was being said there, uh, Joshua bar none. But uh, that bar there in Hebrew is the word for son of. So when you would read it, it would say Simon bar none, and it meant Simon, son of none. People who uh, were identified by who their father was, uh, they were usually identified by their trade, by their living. Now, I'm not doing a commercial for Best Western Motels, but... But uh, for many of the motels in America, uh, you'll go in and you'll find behind the counter, it'll say Best Western, but under it, it's going to have a little nameplate of the person that owns the motel. And many times you'll find that it's somebody uh, from India that has bought into it, and their last name is going to say Patel. All right, y'all travel around. Y'all stay at a Best Western and check me out. Isn't there one right down the street? All right, everybody after church, y'all wheel in there and go to the counter and just wave at them and, and what? No, I'm just kidding. But you'll find that in some cultures, and especially back in biblical days, a name, it meant something. It meant something. So, back in that day... You know, Paul's name uh, was critical. But the last name, it identified what they do. But the next thing that we see this morning in the Scripture is who you follow. And in Romans chapter 1, verse 3 through 6, it says, Concerning His Son Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh... And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through Him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for His name. Among whom you also are called of Jesus Christ. You say, well preacher, what difference does this, this make? What's happening here is that Paul, he's going into a lengthy discourse about the gospel that he's preaching. And I want you to notice a couple things that he shares here. First of all, he, he's saying that Jesus, he is the promised one that was talked to uh, uh, through the prophets, given through the prophets. Uh, he was from the lineage of David. Now, again, these are Romans uh, Roman Christians, so uh, the lineage of everything, it was very, very important here. And then uh, he, he goes on to say that Jesus was both human and divine, and uh, he tells us that Jesus was holy, and he also tells us that Jesus was raised from the dead. Why was Paul meticulously sharing these things? The reason being is that Paul wanted there to be no mistake about who he was talking about because nobody else could make these claims about their life except Jesus Christ. Now why would Paul be so diligent about the historical things of Christ? Well, first of all, because the church at Rome, it had Jewish Christians in it. Now, non-Christian Jews, what were they doing? They were constantly trying to prove that Christ wasn't the Messiah. And that Paul was preaching, was, uh, that his preaching was not something that was uh, radically different from the Old Testament. But also, there were some young Christians there who had no contact with the Apostle Paul, and he needed to show that he was following the same Christ as them. So what Paul was doing is he was, he was trying to establish a foundation of belief with these believers. In other words, listen, these are the things that bind us together. And Paul goes on to tell who he follows. Now I'm here to tell you this morning that who you follow is vitally important. Who is it that you really follow? You've heard me say this before. Sometimes I'm afraid that maybe we're following Christ, but we're following Him 
from a, a distance way back. We're not, we're not following very closely. But who are we following? That's the, the issue. That is the question. He tells of God's commission on him to be a witness to the Gentiles. He wants them to be listening to his teaching that would also uh, uh, help uh, solidify what God had called him to do and what God was doing through him. He wanted them to respect him for what God had done in his life. Now, folks, that's the problem with Christianity today. Don't, don't tune me out. Listen to me. People do not know that the Christ that certain people are teaching is not the Christ of the Bible. You see, in our culture today, there are people that have kind of taken the kind of Jesus that they want and they kind of form him and shape him into something that represents what they really like and want. And folks, that's a dangerous thing. The Jesus that we follow, the Jesus that we love, the Jesus that we proclaim is the Jesus of the Bible. I've heard people today say, well, Yahweh in, in Allah is, is God. No, sir. There, you cannot say that Yahweh and Allah are the same because they are not. If you ever hear somebody make that kind of application that it's the same God, it is not the same God. When you read of Allah in the Koran and Yahweh in the Old Testament, you're going to find that they're vastly different. There's no comparison between the two. But there are people that are trying to preach a Jesus that somehow appeals to everybody. Listen, Jesus said that, listen, that they didn't like him. And folks, if we're going to be followers of Jesus Christ, it means that they're not going to like everything that we say and do. We live in a world where people are constantly preaching a gospel that's contrary to the Bible and what the Bible teaches. Listen, it's not wrong to follow uh, the teachings of a person as long as that person is following the teaching of the Scripture. Just because somebody has got a TV program on the television that's supposed to be Christian and biblical, listen, that doesn't always mean that it matches up with Scripture. You need to make sure that what you're watching and what's being, teaching, uh, being taught, what you're reading, you need to make sure that all those things, that they match up with what the Word of God has to say. And if, they're, if they don't, then you don't need to listen to them. You don't need to be reading it. If it's contrary to what the Word of God has to say, then you need to leave it alone. I read books. Uh, I'm, I, I have to discipline myself to read books. Uh, I didn't grow up uh, reading books too much as a child. But uh, I know that that is a discipline that I need today, and I, I force myself to, well, I shouldn't say force, but I discipline myself to read books because I need to be reading and growing and studying. But listen, before I read somebody's book, I find out something about them before I start reading it. I want to make sure that, that what they believe and uh, the things that they're teaching is going to match up with Scripture. And sometimes you don't know that until you get into reading or listening. But if it doesn't match up with the Word of God, then you need to leave it alone. The problem comes when we read or listen to more about the Bible than reading the Bible. We need the Word of God. You can go into any Christian bookstore and you can find many books about the Bible. But listen, when you place more emphasis on the book of the Bible than what the Bible says, uh, that's the danger. Uh, not just about the Bible, you need to read the Bible. You need to study the Bible. Make sure the books that you read are teaching about the same God, about the same Jesus Christ, the same Holy Spirit as what the Bible says. But the final question this morning is this. What is your name? 
What is your name? When I would uh, go out on Friday or Saturday night, uh, my father would make a little uh, suggestion to me. He said, uh, he said uh, when you go out on Friday and Saturday night, remember, you're representing the Ross name when you go out. And it was just a, a way to really help remind me that uh, what I do, apart from our house, reflected on everybody else. But friend, I'm not so concerned about your last name, but I'm concerned about the name that we represent. That we are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. That we are Christian. And my concern is that the way that we live our lives, the way we go about going to work or school or wherever we are, that listen, that we are representing the name of Jesus Christ as we go, and that people need to see Jesus in the way that we live our lives. So what is your name? What does your name say about who you are? Now, I could call on some of your names in here. And uh, there's some, uh, maybe I should pick on the ones that aren't here. If, if I was to name a certain name, uh, there would be things that you would just instantly think about that person. Uh, let's pick on Brother Ben since he's not here. Brother Ben, uh, can I pick on you? I think he said it was all right. But let's just, for instance, say Brother Ben. When you think about the name Brother Ben, what do you think of? First thing that I think of is I'm too stressed to be blessed. Did I say it wrong? Oh. So that's not what he said then, right? Okay. Too, too blessed to be stressed. Uh, he's kind. Wouldn't you think? What's some other things about Brother Ben that you think of? Optimistic. Thank you. There's their thing. So when you think about his name, we automatically think about things about that person. But you know, the way that we live our lives when we're at school or at work or at home or wherever we are, listen, we are representatives of Jesus Christ and we are representatives of him. And what is it that people see in us? Do they see Jesus? Do they see that we are followers, that we are bond servants, that we are servants of God, not because we fear Him, because we love Him and we're sold out to Him? Do people see that in the way that we live our lives? What about what we do? I think that's talking a lot about does your, your walk match your talk? You know, we may say that we're Christians, but does it really show up in the things that we do and the things that we say? But who do we follow? Who do we follow? Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing for people, people to know us and to know our names and know without a shadow of a doubt that we are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we follow Him? Do people know that by the way that we live our lives? Does your name speak of who you are in Christ? We're living in a lost and dying world, and we're scratching our head, and we're trying to figure everything else uh, out that's going on around us. But do people know who we are in Christ? Who we are in Christ? You see, the name makes a difference. If we're a Christian, then we need to act like it. We need to talk like it. We need to live like it. You see, that was Paul's credentials. Paul wanted them to know of what his name is and who he was and what he did and who he followed. And folks, that's the same thing for you and I. People need to know that we are Christian and they need to know who we follow is the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me just a moment? This morning, if you have never put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I promise you it is the single most important decision that you'll ever make in your life. 
you will never be disappointed. And this morning, if you're here and you don't know whether you're a believer or not, I'd love to help you with it. During the invitation, if you just are not sure about your salvation or you, you know without a doubt that you've never been saved, then listen, why leave here today without giving your heart and life to Him? This morning, if you're here and you're a believer, and you'd have to say, Brother Jeff, I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm a follower of Christ, but I've not been following Him very closely. I've not been representing the name Christian very well. Listen, God's more interested in the direction that your feet are pointed in right at this moment than where they were yesterday. You can recommit yourself, rededicate yourself right here afresh and anew. Listen, if, if you have messed up, you have fallen, you have sinned in your life, listen, he says that if we will confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He'll give you a fresh new start right where you are today. Maybe you're a believer, and, and maybe you've been visiting here, and, and maybe God's been dealing with you about being a part of this church and joining uh, and your membership, moving your membership here. Listen, we'd love to have you. We'd love to have you. Put your shoulder to the Lord's work here. Or maybe this morning you've got a burden on your heart, and maybe you just need somebody to pray with you. We're going to try to, as best we can, to practice social distancing, but we certainly will pray with you. But in these moments together, what's important is, what are we supposed to do with what we've heard today? What does your name represent. It's just not your family lineage. It's your spiritual lineage. Are you representing Christ in the way that you live? Is the message of the way you're living, does it match up with the Word of God? During our invitation time, I just simply want to ask you to respond as the Holy Spirit leads you. And if there's a decision that He's laid on your heart today, you come. Don't put it off any longer. It's amazing that when an invitation is given, Satan wants you to hang on to the back of that pew and not let go of it. Let go of whatever's holding you back from Christ today. Father, thank You for this morning and thank You for what we've experienced What's most overwhelming to us is your presence. To know that we are in the presence of the creator of the universe, the great I am, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We pray at this very moment that the Holy Spirit will speak to every heart every mind today. And I pray that we will let loose of all the things that we hang on to in this world and this morning that we'll run to you. Father, it's, it's not my place to do the changing. That's your job. I pray that your word this morning has spoken to your people today. And may we be drawn to your throne of grace this morning. May the Holy Spirit move and work in a powerful way that the only explanation it could be is that God did it. God moved. God breathed. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Bruce is going to come and lead us in our invitation hymn this morning. Uh, I'm going to be down front to receive you. Uh, Brother Donnie's also going to be down here to help you. But if God has spoken today, you come. Let's stand together as we sing. You come if God has spoken today.
I'm going to ask the, the parks if they'll come and stand with me up here. Let me, uh, well, I'll leave this on. Y'all can, is it hurting your ears? Okay, all right. Um, I think everybody here that's been here for some time know Richard and Julie Parks, and uh, they are former members of our church and uh, moved to Headland. And uh, God has led them back here. And uh, I want you to know that Leah Brook and Will, uh, that their membership's still here. So uh, we don't necessarily have to, uh, to vote per se on them because they're already members. But we do, we welcome them back as well. But if you're in favor of uh, receiving them back into our church, uh, would you uh, say amen? amen. Uh, any opposed, say no. Didn't hear one. Um, with, with the uh, way things are, we're not able to come down and greet people like we normally would. And uh, those of you that have been here for some time know that, uh, I mean, uh, they come and hug your neck. And uh, y'all know that. So uh, if you are in, excited about this, would you just kind of welcome them? Let's give them a, a hand today. And... Um, Maybe after we get reopened real good, uh, we'll have a, a fellowship time and we'll get all those that have joined uh, since we've reopened and we're going to have a big fellowship for them and uh, we'll have a greeting line and uh, we'll hug their necks at that time, hopefully. So, uh, but uh, we're excited about what God is doing. I uh, want you to have a seat just a, a moment or two and uh, Brother Donnie's got a few announcements for us and then uh, Brother Curtis is going to dismiss us this morning. Man, isn't God good? Oh.
been open four weeks, and in the four weeks we've been back open, we've had a uh, we've had a family join each of those four weeks, and that's not anything that Heritage Baptist Church is doing. That's what God is doing to glorify Himself. Uh, we're so blessed and excited to have the, the parks back with us. Uh, we're gonna uh, a few announcements. So one announcement is if you're still uh, need to give your tithes and offerings, you can either drop it in the offering plate here. There's an offering box in the back. There's also one in the back back here. Remember, you can also mail your offerings and tithes to the church at 1951 Westgate Parkway. And now you can go to hbcdothan.org and there's a giving button and you can give that way as well. Uh, the only other announcement we have is deacons. We do have a meeting today at 4.30 uh, and that's going to be in the fellowship hall. So today at 4.30 the deacons will meet. And that's all of our announcements. Um, Brother Tommy Taylor is going to be uh, We're taping him today for Sunday school. So we'll have a lesson sometime this afternoon and we'll send that out on our text app. So uh, just wanted to let you be, be aware of that. Yeah. And we do want to say brother, thank you to Brother Bruce again for being here today. And with that, Brother Curtis is going to come close us in prayer. Join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today. Lord, I ask a special blessing upon each one that's here. And Father, those that may not have yet returned for some reason or another, Lord, we pray that you'll continue to keep your hand upon those. Father, we uh, thank you for the word we've heard this morning as you spoke through Brother Jeff. And Father, I pray that we'll be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. And we pray that uh, a special blessing upon each one as we leave, that you'll guide, guard, and protect us. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's miss you, okay? Those of you that are in the balcony, if you'll make your way